Hey, how's it going? My name is Daniel Hamby. I'm a filmmaker uh, and storyteller based in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I was challenged by Armando to do a color correction breakdown for one of my videos that I created. Um, it was a C200 Canon raw test. Um, this is kind of a little bit off the cuff, but I just kind of wanted to show a little bit about what I was doing in the video uh, to create the looks that I had. So uh, let's get started here. Uh, so I have the timeline open here. We have this shot here. This is uh, my mother-in-law here at the beach. This is part of our family vacation. And you've got like the some nice highlights here, some deep shadows, things like that uh, that are going on. And a lot of it is subjective, and it's all about what looks good to you and, and your eye. I think that's kind of where I start um, when I do these things. So, so you can see right now, um, it's a pretty flat image. You can see that in the waveform here. Um, and basically why I like to start is I just like to try to make it look as realistic as possible. Now this film is filmed in RAW. You know, you don't have to have like all these crazy LUTs or anything to make it look really nice. What you can do is uh, just use the Alexa LUT that comes with the Adobe program. That's what I do. That's how I start everything off. So I use this Alexa default uh, log to C709. So I click that. Um, and then that just kind of helps keep it from flattening uh, out. Now you're seeing that it's spanning the whole... Uh, image. This is kind of what you want to see when you're uh, color correcting and trying to make it look normal is you just want to make sure that you've got as many of the blacks or get as close to this zero without crossing it as much as you can and same with the highlights. You want to get as close as you can without crossing it there. Um, so it is a little high on the highlights there so I'm just going to tap it down just a hair and save with my blacks. I'm not going to I'm going to increase it there. So now we've got it looking good but it's still a little flat. Um, better than it was um, but um, it could still go a little further. So where I like to start from here um, is I like to do play with the shadows a little bit um, with this and I just kind of mess around with that. Um, this is, you know, I'm kind of going for like a sunset evening look. So, um, you know, so the shadows and the midtones there are going to be a little bit darker than you normally find. So I would, I would dip that down. And then I might increase the highlights just a little bit, just so you can get a little bit. Again, you're kind of trying to keep things from just hanging out here in the middle, or at least with dealing with sunset stuff. You know, I think my contrast is looking good. You know, my shadows and highlights are looking good, but I want to kind of play with the saturation a little bit just to kind of make it look. Uh, what I'm aiming for here is just like, what does saturate look like to the to normal? I like that's that's really what I'm aiming for so I'm not going to increase it a lot I'm just going to increase it just a little bit um, and yeah now we're getting those colors there so that's looking actually pretty good we're getting the sunset look this is a very natural uh, look to it what I like to do to take this a step further is I have this LUT pack which I'll, I'll, I'll include a link to it's not mine or anything it's just these free LUTs that I got from some website somewhere <laughs> um, but they have this one just called Sedona um, and I like to use the cube myself, but you know, it's all whatever. Um, but basically it could be any kind of like, uh, orange blue LUT basically. Now this is way too intense, but the cool thing is you got this intensity lever you can kind of play with. So you can kind of get it to where you want it. And I don't, I don't like to have it like that's, that's with intensity off basically, but I like to kind of have it maybe somewhere right there. So somewhere between the 20 and 40 uh, percent on intensity just to see where we started here that's with it off that's with it on so which is actually yeah so it looks pretty much spot on to what I did um, in the original video there so um, we have these light streaks coming across we've got the kite flying in the air um, you know the waves things like that so so again we are just trying to get to look as normal to the eye as possible um, so I just put that Alexa to Rec 709 LUT on. Uh, get the blacks where I want it. Keep it as close to that zero without crossing. Same with the highlights there. Um, and then let's just plummet that shadow right about there. And let's increase the highlight just a little bit. Awesome. And we're going to increase the saturation. We can increase it a pretty good bit, actually. The cool thing about the C200 is uh, you can edit your color temperature in post. You just go into your effects controls and you click over here where you see the uh, name of the clip. Um, and you just click that and you have all these settings here. So you can, can change the color temperature of the clip. You can change the tint color from, um, you know, to like a pink or a green. Um, I won't mess with that this time around. Um, and you can even control exposure. 
Um, so you can make it a lot brighter. I mean, oh my goodness, that looks like almost daytime. That's ridiculous. Or you can make it really dark um, there, which is kind of a cool look too. Um, but there's so many things. That's the beauty about this is you can, you can change the picture profile. You can change all kinds of stuff in here and it looks awesome. Um, but I'm gonna leave that as is. I'll just change the color temperature to be a hair bit warmer. And then I'm gonna go to the creative tab, hit browse, use that LUT. Uh, it's very intense, so we're going to turn it way down. And this one is probably going to be, I mean, that, that one's like at 14, 15%. Yeah, that's pretty close to what I did the first time. You know, all of this can be adjusted just by, you know, what your preferences are, um, what you're looking for, what you're trying to communicate uh, in that image. Um, other helpful tips, obviously, play, off your, play on the strengths of the shot that you filmed. If you didn't film a sunset shot, uh, don't try to make it look like a sunset. You know, your shot's going to be stronger if you're playing more to the environment um, that is actually there. For example, this shot was not filmed. Um, you know, it's kind of filmed in that magic hour time, but it wasn't quite filmed at sunset. So I'm not going to try to make it look like a sunset. So I'm going to go here uh, to hit the Rec 709 LUT. It's still even a little bit flat there, so I'm going to try to correct that. So I'm going to bring those blacks as close to that line as I can. And same thing with the whites here. I'm going to uh, probably bring it up. I'm probably not going to bring it up all the way here. So I'm going to dip the shadows some, dip the whites just a little bit, or the highlights, I mean. This kind of looked like what it looked like when I was there. I increase shadow, uh, the saturation a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to go in, add that LUT, and bring it down just a little bit. And yeah, I mean, it's just a simple look, but it looks beautiful. Um, you get in the detail in the clouds here. Just some final takeaways with uh, working on color in general and, and with the C200 as well. You know, don't overthink it. You know, you can get into all of the ins, ands, and buts uh, with the color science of all these uh, different cameras and things like that. But shoot it with the mind that you're going to color. You know, make sure your color temperature is right, your ISO exposure, all that stuff is right. Even when you're filming raw, you want to try to get um, that to match what you're seeing in the environment as much as possible. When you're color grading your footage or starting out, make sure you just get it to look like the natural environment that's there first before you put any kind of filters or um, exaggerate any of the features and work on the strengths um, in that shot. Um, always play off the strengths within the shot. Uh, don't try to make a shot look sunsetty. Um, that's not at sunset, um, unless you absolutely have to. And overall, just keep it simple. Uh, don't, you know, don't overdo it with your filters. To me, that's like the biggest sign of amateurness is if the filter looks like an Instagram filter, unless there's just like something you're really going for, like a Saving Private Ryan or, you know, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, where that filter is just using it, uh, to tell that part of the story. You know, we're, when you're filming stuff like this, it's not necessary to do that. And then overall, it all really comes down to taste. It what It's what looks good to you. Everyone's going to have a different opinion on what your color profile should look like. But um, just go with your gut. Go what looks good to your eye. You know, keep coloring images and things like that. And your taste will refine as, uh, as you keep working. So anyway, that's kind of a, a breakdown of what my color correction process looks like uh, with the C200. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments or or info that i can learn from uh i really appreciate it uh yeah thanks again uh talk to you guys soon